Thank you. Okay. Um, sorry to ask a do you agree type question, but I'll, I'll keep it short. It's to do with the language that we're using. Do you agree we should stop using the language of alienation that belongs to the enemy? Because Chelsea Manning just did what any human being is supposed to do. When you become aware of a crime being committed, you are supposed to tell everybody. And Julian Assange did what any normal publisher should do, tell everybody. But we use the term whistleblower, which is a minority term and a slanted term. The only thing abnormal about any of this is the horrendous intimidation that stops people performing a normal, absolutely normal public duty. And second, just the, we should also stop using the term leaks because it suggests that a vessel needs repairing, whereas any vessel that contains and hides the stinking substance of crime should be smashed. Good evening. Um, I've got a quick question for Jonathan. Recently I've met some young journalists and um, very ambitious, beautiful kids. They, and I said to them, if you join a major organisation and it starts doing the things that it's done to Julian, what would you do? What advice would you give them in that situation? Well, I'd just like to congratulate you on this meeting. It's the most amazing meeting I've ever been to with three of the most cogent and compelling speeches I've ever heard. And I've wondered all my life, I've always suspected there was a massive conspiracy against democracy and the people, and I always wondered whether I'd face the sort of question that people faced in the 20s and 30s in Italy especially and in Germany, Spain and across Europe. And I think we're now facing that sort of question. I think you're incredibly brave, along with uh, Julian Assange and the other people who support him, in putting your heads above the parapet. But my question really would be, where are, where's the next generation? Uh, look around. I mean, with all due respect, I don't see anybody under 50 or 40 here. I mean, all the people. Oh, I'm very sorry, there's one. All right, but with one exception, where are they? It's going to be their world that they're going to live in, and God help them if we lose this battle. Well, let me address the question that was, was addressed to me. Um, what advice would I give to young journalists who are starting out and want to achieve the kind of transparent society that WikiLeaks was, and is still trying to, to achieve for us? Um, Look, the issue here isn't really what advice we can give to young journalists, it's what kind of support are we going to give, because the journalists are operating in a society which can choose, can want to be a transparent society or, or not to be one. There are lots of platforms now for young journalists, more than, when I was a young journalist, you worked your way up the ladder. You started on a local provincial newspaper, you got your exams done, and then you hoped you could get your break in London. And the whole thing was controlled, you were selected. Some of you may have read Noam Chomsky and Edmund Herman's book, Manufacturing Consent. There was a filtering system. And you, each step of the way, you had to convince somebody that you deserved to stay there or to get promoted. And if you weren't a team player, if you didn't abide by the, the rules, if you didn't fit in, um, you weren't going to survive there for very long. And if you couldn't sustain a position in a newspaper, you were, you were doomed as a journalist. You could maybe publish your own little newsletter and put it out somewhere and hope a few people would read it. We're in a totally different world now, where you can create your own readerships. You have, we have platforms like Substack, where you, you can send out to potentially tens or hundreds of thousands of readers. Uh, we have social media, where you can develop your own uh, followings. Um, 
and we have a world where people can share information almost instantly. So there's the, the platforms, and obviously Julian Assange and Wikileaks were at the very forefront of developing those platforms, uh, to make our societies much more transparent. The, the problem here is how, how, where is the support for those kinds of ventures? Where's the support for Julian Assange? Where's the support for Wikileaks? If we allow our society to become, uh, to, to wield secret power, to keep power uh, veiled from us, then, then young journalists ha ha won't have that kind of support. This is why it's so important that we stand up and make a noise about what's going on to Julian, because if we don't, other journalists will get the signal that they're in danger should they try and follow his path should they try and echo what he's tried to do, uh, it will be too dangerous. So the, the, the responsibility isn't on those journalists, really. It's on us as a society to start to prioritize uh, greater transparency, to uphold uh, the kind of journalism, support the kind of journalism uh, that is prepared to take the risk. And when people get um, uh, isolated, when they're, when they're attacked, um, in cases, like Julian and, and Craig here when they, they come up against the, the law, um, that we make a noise about it, we shout, we scream. And journalists also need to be doing that, as I said in my, my talk. Um, so that's, we can't have a transparent society. We can't expect journalists to break ranks and say things against power um, if there isn't a wide support for that to happen. If people are just going to Allow, keep their heads down and keep quiet, then no, no journalist is going to do it. So I, I, the message isn't really for, for the journalists, it's for us. We've got to support that kind of journalism. We've got to, to, to rally behind people when they're being victimized and persecuted and show that we care and that it's important to us. Um, so it, it's a lesson for all of us to, to start making a noise, as much noise as we can. I think. That's, the, that's the lesson. Yes, I, I definitely agree. There is hope. And, you know, you, and I, I would like to also to say to journalists, fight, fight the fight, because it's worth. I mean, I had to leave my newspaper, and I had to leave my, the major newspaper, La Repubblica, the Italian Day La Repubblica, but, and I had very little hope of finding another job as a journalist. But I did, I did. And I saw my income collapsing, which is uh, not a good thing, but I would do it again to do my job. Absolutely would do it again. And compared to what Julian has suffered, my troubles are really nothing, really nothing. And in fact, in my book, I didn't even address this trouble. First of all, because I don't want to be at the center of the troubles, <laughs> considering what he has experienced, but because I think, uh, as I said, compared to what Julian Assange has experienced, I have experienced nothing. I, I have experienced intimidation, some intimidation, yes, but not death threat, for example. And uh, I, I had been advised back in 2011, after the big revelation on the cables, Afghan warlords, Iraq warlords, cables, uh, Guantanamo documents, well, why you risk your reputation for them? Uh, you got your scoops from them, drop them, because it will close many doors to you. And it was true, it did close many doors professionally, but uh, absolutely was worth. So to a, uh, to a young journalist, I would say, do it, because it is definitely worth, absolutely. And I just want to reply to the question on the young people. Yes, I noticed there are many, we need the young people. I think many of people have seen the darkness and they see the dark, the dark days coming again with the return of authoritarianism, with the destruction of free press. So they are the first to be alarmed. But I noticed that when I, uh, when I explained to the young people what this case is about, they immediately under, understand what is at stake. So I'm not pessimistic, I would say. Thank you, Stefania. Yeah, in reply to the questions, I 
the first question about you know, not allowing the state and the corporate media to tame the language uh, and, and to put us on the defensive. I think that's a very, a very good point. It was occurring to me, Julian is of course now charged under the Espionage Act. I haven't yet heard the BBC refer to him as a spy, but maybe that's coming. That's a, but um, you're right, we, we should be careful and, and we should. Exactly, I and mean, Chelsea Manning's a hero. Uh, and, and a hero who blew the whistle on crime. And uh, we, we, we should be entirely positive on that. Um, on the involvement of young people, um, I think uh, you know the forms of social interaction uh, are changing. Uh, none of us die in the same society we, we were born into uh, because society changes as it goes along. And I think um, in the UK, it is increasingly unlikely uh, to get uh, younger people out to this kind of public meeting. Um, interestingly, I, I, I did a tour of, um, of Germany with Niels here uh, before Christmas for a month, uh, and there the audiences were definitely younger than you get in the UK. But when we um, did the hands around Parliament uh, demonstration, where we went you know, across both bridges and both sides of Parliament, um, I was delighted at the number of young people on that. Uh, younger people were definitely in the majority of, of, on that. So it depends the kind of activity and what you're doing. It's not that, it's not that young people uh, aren't interested or aren't involved. It's just that um, attending this kind of public meeting uh, is, is not the current generation's method of, of, of doing politics. And I think there's no point being nostalgic for it, we, 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 we have to accept that's the way society has, has gone. Um, but to conclude, you know, I think you know, the gentleman who said, uh, you know, we all face the question of you know, what we, would we have done in the 1930s, would we have stood out from the crowd? I think with freedom of speech it is coming uh, to that situation. Julian certainly you know, is jailed for nothing more than, than standing up against war crimes and for, for telling the truth. Um, I myself lost my job for blowing the whistle on torture and extraordinary rendition. And I didn't ever think when I joined the civil service that I would face the dilemma of what will I do if my government starts torturing people. Um, uh, but society, unfortunately, um, has slipped away on, on, on an increasingly uh, illiberal dangerous uh, and increasingly totalitarian, certainly authoritarian path in, in the last couple of decades. And there's no sign of it getting better. And uh, we have to uh, ring that alarm bell very strongly and persuade more and more people that they have to stand up in the way that Julian has done.